Okay, we've already taken a look at some examples where we're drawing them out visually, and now we're moving on to adding vectors uh, algebraically. So here's some notation, and depending on what uh, teacher you have or what class you're in, you may actually see these different three notations being used. Okay, uh, most texts actually use the second one with bold letters, but you might also see these other ones as well. So this right here, we're assuming, all these are assuming you have what's called a position vector. A position vector is a vector that has its origin uh, at zero, zero. So basically, when you have that one at zero, zero, we have a horizontal component that's A, and you have a vertical component that's B. We kind of looked at that when we did the graphing ones too. We had that grid before, and that would be you know going over this many boxes and going up that many boxes, kind of the same idea here. So you can either have uh, it looking like this, where you have it in between some uh, inequality notation here. That's basically just, it doesn't really mean inequality at all. It just means that A and B is inside there, and that's one way of representing a vector. Second way of doing it is, again, with these bold letters. The I and the J, the I represents the horizontal component. The J represents the vertical component. So we have horizontal, we have vertical. Same idea here, the I and J means that. It's just that sometimes you may actually see the little I hat. That, 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 that's that, what that notation means, it's hat. So you have an I with a little a point up there, and this is also J uh, with that hat on there as well. So th these three are the different types of notations that you could have. Now, ideally, what you want to do is you want to get vectors that are drawn uh, at the origin. But suppose, instead of giving it to you in the origin, let's suppose they give you a P1 and a P2. So let's say that you have a vector that's drawn like this, and it looks like that, and you have it drawn uh, two different places. So this is, might be your P1 that's equals X1, Y1, and you might have a P2 and that's x2 and y2. So given that, we want to be able to take this vector and rewrite it at the origin. So again, we want to turn this into a position vector, and we have a formula that allows us to do that. So if you're, if you're given this kind of information, and you want to find, take it back to a position vector starting from 0, 0, there's a formula. So, uh, so basically, to find v equals p1, p2, so if you want to have that, then basically your v is going to equal, here's a formula, it's going to be x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. That's a formula, again we're using this notation, but it could also work for the other notation as well, but basically what this allows you to do, it allows you to take a vector normally drawn here, and you rewrite it, at the origin. It's going to have exactly the same slope, the same angle, it's just that now our starting point is not going to be here, it's now going to be at 0, 0. So this is the formula that allows you to do that. It basically finds a, this is for finding a, a position vector and use it whenever you're given two points. Now keep in mind that the order of the points is important. Okay, P1 is always your initial, your starting point. Your P2 is always your ending point where the arrowhead actually is. So if I switch these and did P2 and P1, that means that these would switch. You'd have X1 minus X2 and you'd have Y1 minus Y2. That would just switch the order around. So now that we've looked at this concept, let's take a look at a couple examples. Okay, for example, we're given our two points, P1 and P2. We want to find the vector that goes through P1, P2. P1 is your starting point. And recall that we just talked about that there's a formula that allows you to take this and turn it into a position vector. So the formula for this would be x, x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. Let's go ahead and label these, the points that are given. The first point, this is always going to be x1, y1. Second point is x2 and y2. So when we want to form the v from p1 to p2, there's a formula for that. We just talked about that before. It's x2 minus x1, 4 minus negative 1. And we have 6 minus 2. That's your X1, x2 minus x1, and we have y2 minus y1, we have that. And now we just want to simplify this. So when you simplify, you get 5 and you get 4. So let's take a look. Let's, let's actually draw both these vectors out so you can see visually what it was that we just did. So the first thing that we did was we, we, had, these, we had the vector at those two points. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those. Just give you a quick sketch here. So I have negative 1, 2. Here's a starting point, that's going to be my original P1. My P2 is 4 and 6. 
and that's going to be right here. That's my P2. And this is what my original vector looked like. It started from P1 and it ended at uh, P2. Now when I went through this work here with the formula, my answer was 5, 4. Well, that means I've found a vector now that does start at the origin at 0, 0. I'm going to go over 5, and I'm going to go up 4. So if I do that, I get this point, and this right here is a V. So notice what I just did. Originally, I had it going through P1, P2 up here, and all I did was I subtracted everything to get it down to a vector that starts at 0, 0. Now, it's the same exact length as I had before, it's also at the same angle that I had before. So nothing's changing except where it actually starts from. I rewrote it to start out at uh, zero, zero. So now let's do part B. Okay, now for part B. Here's P1 and here's uh, P2. Again, uh, what we wanna do on this is label our X1 and X1, Y1 is this one. X2, Y2 is the second point that they gave. And you want to find a vector v that goes through p1, p2. So again, the formula that you're going to do is just take the difference of the x's, difference of the y's. So you're going to do x2 minus x1, 6 minus negative 1. And then y2 minus y1, negative 2 minus 4. And if we do that, um, we're going to get 7 and negative 6. So we have negative 2 minus 4 was this last one here, and we got that as your answer. So again, all that did was, originally where this was plotted, it just took that original vector and moved it to the starting point, 0, 0, and it goes out to 7 and negative 6. What would that actually look like? Well, if I, if I just drew this one only, I go over 7, and I go down 6. So this vector actually points uh, down. So remember, Whatever the starting point is, whatever the ending point is, that's important. So originally it was drawn there. Now if I have negative one, four, negative one, one, two, three, four, here's my original starting point. That's my P1. My P2 was six, and I'm gonna go down two, would be here. So notice P1 is always the starting point. P2 is the ending point right here. So again, that's doing the same thing. P1, P2 was originally drawn like that. It originally actually went and pointed down. When we redid it, it's still going to point down, it's just that we removed remove this one from that starting point to the starting point of 0, 0. So again, position vector always starts at 0, 0.